Hey everybody, Skylar here, and today I want to talk to you about a few different stories going on in the crypto space that I found pretty interesting. Um, before I end up going in that, into that, though, just know I do make these videos every single day talking about the crypto space and what's going on, so if you are interested in, in this space, uh, liking and subscribing is not a bad idea, but let's get going. So. Uh, the first story I want to talk to you about is the FBI wants your help in investigating $2.5 billion in the crypto scam BitConnect. <coughs> so, I don't know if many of you remember <coughs> what happened with BitConnect, but essentially uh, they were promising 1% um, gains. It seems like such a easy... Uh, everyone should know this, but it's been so long, maybe so, so many new people who don't, but they were promising 1% gains uh, um, daily, which is insane. Um, and they had, you know, they were saying that there were these bots that were trading and doing all this stuff, but there was no proof. And eventually, uh, they found out it was a big Ponzi scheme. So in January, I think is when we asked January, 2018 is when BitConnect eventually crashed and the BitConnect meme was, was invented. So I'll, I'll link all these, all these websites. So if you haven't seen the Carlos meme or, you know, uh, the original video, I, you know, I suggest check it out. It is a uh, gonna be a part of crypto history for sure. But uh, at any rate, the uh, the um, they ended up uh, getting a cease and desist order from Texas, and then there was another state as well. But uh, when they got that, that's why they said they had to shut down. Uh, but then all of a sudden, nobody got their money back, and then there is tons of promoters. Um, it mentions Trevon James here, but there is uh, there is many many other promoters. Um, oh my gosh, I can't even think of um, Crypto Nick. Um, you know Trevon James, Craig Grant. Uh, there's even uh, the Crypto Chick. Like there, there's a couple, quite a few people. I know most of them left, and you know, and uh, they they you know well, a couple of them. I I don't I don't think a couple of them knew what was going on, but I do think you know a couple of them you know, kind of knew what was going on, but they were getting so much money that they didn't care sort of thing. At any rate, the FBI is looking into all of this um, right now. So they actually, um, there we go, here it is. They actually posted on their site that they're looking for victims, and uh, if, you, if, they're, if you are a victim, then they, you know, have a questionnaire for you to fill out and um, but I'll post a link to this so you, you can check all that out. But yeah, pretty nuts. And then this thing right here is crazy. The BitConnect community is trying to resurrect the Bitcoin, the the BitConnect coin. So um, I mean, they don't have very many followers, but but still. Um, hey, and I actually I thought I responded on this. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Um, I just don't understand why they're trying to resurrect this. Now, Mt. Gox is doing the same sort of thing, you know, uh, although, um, dang it, the Mighty Ducks actor, you know, uh, the the child actor guy, I can't remember his name, uh, Pierce, uh, Rob, uh, um, dang it, something, Brock Pierce. Brock Pierce is resurrecting Mt. Gox right now, um, and I also find that weird. Now. I can't understand if BitConnect, if you know the people who got screwed over, are trying to create a new project to like pay back the people. Like that could make sense, but it seems like that they're just trying to say, "Hey, the coin was all actually awesome, so let's just bring back the coin and not the Ponzi." Or, or I, I don't know. This is just nuts to me that, some, that someone would do this, and it's just nuts to me that you know posts that are promoting BitConnect are getting a bunch of likes. What are the comments on these? Why can't I see the comments? Oh, show more replies. It's only showing one. You people are just crazy. Can you space and go away? There's no. Yeah. At any rate, maybe someone's trolling. I don't know. But pretty interesting story, I guess. Uh, next, I want to talk about a crypto brokerage that actually lets you escape with fiat with no KYC required. Uh, now, there is only a $5,000 withdrawal that you can do um, per, I don't know if it's per day, but it's per withdrawal. That's the max without doing KYC. 
Um, but you can withdraw uh, money without KYC in the Swiss exchange, which is, um, you know, kind of cool, I guess. I mean, I don't really... <coughs> I mean, people that m money launder, I'm sure, are interested in much higher numbers than $5,000, but, um, you know, over the course of X amount of, you know, days, weeks, whatever, you can pull out money, I don't know. But I just found that that was pretty interesting. Um, and then <laughs> this story was actually, a f it was a while ago, I just... I just, this is nuts, 43% of millennials, so there was a survey that was done um, and on eToro, and 43% uh, of millennials online trusted crypto exchanges more than the U.S. stock exchanges. And even, even though 77% of Generation X tr trusted um, exchanges more, that's still, that number's nuts. Um, like, how can you... How can you trust an exchange that there's not a single exchange out there, crypto exchange, that has been around more than nine years? So the fact that you're taking these companies that have been around three, four, five, six times, you know, I don't know when the when the um, first brokerage company came up, but um, it sure as heck has been more than, you know, nine years. And so it's just kind of nuts to me that, that there is that trust. Now, um, now I can understand certain brokerage firms, but the big ones, uh, I don't know. It's just found it pretty interesting that uh, that there's a bunch of clueless people out there that are trusting cryptocurrency exchanges, and and uh, that actually kind of brings me into the next story where the largest Canadian uh, crypto exchange, Quadrica, officially went offline. So they officially sent all of their money. So if you don't know the story about Quadrica, um, it uh, CX it their CEO died, and it was kind of a weird story. So their CEO, who was sick with Crohn's disease, went off to the Philippines by himself to do a um, to do a charity project down there. He ended up dying, and when he died, he was the only one that held the keys to the company's money. So no one could access any of the company's money, which, um, you know, which which was awful because then all of a sudden nobody was able to, to nobody was able to the largest crypto exchange in Canada. All of a sudden, nobody was able to pull out money, and there was just a lot of speculation because uh, because why would the owner who was sick well, first of all, why would somebody hold all the keys and not have a, a way in case they got into a car wreck or you know something happened? Secondly, um, if you're sick, why would you not put that in place for sure? If you're in a, uh, if you're sick enough to where you could die, and then like you go off anyway. So um, people have been thinking, you know, saying, oh, he faked his death, and you know, and there's no, you know, who knows what really happened. Um, the, what I, my conspiracy belief currently with this whole situation is that uh, Quadrica, I believe that he died and now the company is using his death as an excuse to take all the money. So I think maybe what could have happened is he actually did give some people in the company the keys in case he did pass away and then he did pass away and then the company stole all the money and then or the uh, a, a individual or two or I don't know took all that money and and then just said oh he died so um, you know he was the only one that had had the keys sort of thing but there's people looking into the wallets and I haven't heard any proof one way or another what's going on but it's still a story that's you know people are still trying to figure out but <clears throat> um, currently they uh, they have sent all of their Canadian dollars, um, which was a lot, 20 million, 5 million, 70,000 US dollars. Um, they sent it all to a holding company um, who's holding it all, and then they're going to go um, you know, through court, and then they're, they're going to figure out you know, what, to do with the, what to do with everything. So that's currently what's going on right now um, with Quadrica. 
and it'd be interesting to see what takes place with this. Again, I'm gonna always any any of these stories that 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 haven't don't really have an ending. I'm always gonna continue looking at them, and I'll tell you about them later. So if once an update happens of this, I'll definitely you know give you that uh, update. But um, yep, that is um, it. So super appreciate everybody um, who's watched so far um like subscribe all that jazz anyways appreciate everybody who's been watching and i'll see you tomorrow bye